గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ టు వన్ అండ్ ఆల్ మై సెల్ఫ్ మునిరాజ్ నాయుడు అసిస్టెంట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ కంప్యూటర్ సైన్స్ అండ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ ఏరోనాటికల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ హైదరాబాద్ సో ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ న్యూ సబ్జెక్ట్ దట్ ఈస్ ఆపరేటింగ్ సిస్టమ్స్ సో టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు సి the basics of uh, operating systems that means uh, introduction to operating system so let's start uh, so we know nowadays uh, operating systems plays a major role in any kind of systems so like if you take a uh, mobile we have different operating systems like android windows ios so similarly if you take any desktops or laptops we have different operating systems like linux as well as a uh, windows so basically what that particular operating system means what is the purpose of that particular operating system why we need operating system so in this video i'm going to discuss about uh, what operating systems do and how the computer system organization is established and what are the various uh, computer system architectures because you know the prerequisite for this operating systems or computer organization so let us look at this what is an operating system you know operating system which acts as a intermediary between user of a computer as well as uh, the computer hardware so just it just acts as a bridge between user as well as the system hardware so what are the major goals of this operating system first one whatever the operating system we are using whether that is a command based operating system or a graphical based operating system which execute user programs and make solving user problems easier so we know always the users interacts with the applications so not directly interacts with the computer hardware so whatever the programs we are going to execute that particular execution part it takes care about the operating system and which helps to solve our problems uh, in a easy manner then second goal of operating system is operating system makes the computer system convenient to use we know nowadays how conveniently we are using each and every system so which provides some convenience to the users that is another goal of operating system then another goal of operating system is use the computer hardware in an efficient manner use the computer hardware in an efficient manner so we know the definition says that operating system acts as interface between user as well as the system hardware now we are looking into that how efficiently each and every user makes use of that particular computer hardware so that is the major goal of operating system first one execute user programs and make solving user problems easier and uh, second one makes the computer system convenient to use and the last one use the computer hardware in an efficient manner so these are the operating system goals so we know 
basically how the computer system may be organized because whatever the components we are using with the help of those components each and every user may execute some applications so for execution of our own programs or applications how operating system uh, provides an environment and how the hardware components are established to execute our own programs so that is uh, we can here described in the form of a, a computer system structure so i know you are very familiar about the computer system structure each and every computer system can be divided into the basically four components one is a uh, hardware second one is operating system third one application programs and lastly users so we know hardware which provides some basic computing resources basic computing resources so that means we know each and uh, every application must be executed with the help of some uh, basic resources which are helpful to execute our own programs those are processor that is a cpu central processing unit and a memory both here we are using primary memory as well as the secondary memory and some basic uh, input output devices so these are combined together we can call it as a hardware what is the major role of hardware here which provides some basic uh, computing resources then operating system so we know operating system acts as interface between user as well as the computer hardware so whatever the hardware components uh, which are helpful to execute our own programs now the operating system controls and coordinates that particular uh, hardware components among various applications and various users because nowadays uh, uh, we are in we can call as a multitasking right so multi users single user multitasking multiple users multitasking systems are there right so now whatever the operating system which handles any particular application programs which controls and coordinates the use of various uh, hardware devices among various applications and various users so that is the purpose of operating system now coming to the third component uh, that is a uh, application program now coming to the third one that is a uh, application program see these application programs which defines the ways in which the system resources are used to solve the computing problems of the users so we know always each and every application program must be executed with the help of some system programs so here the application programs which defines the ways in which the system resources you know whatever the system resources which are helpful to execute my own application program which are used to solve the computing problems of the users so that is the responsibility of the application program so you know just uh, we have some basic uh, application programs like uh, word processors compilers web browsers database systems etc then finally comes into the users so this is the last component of computer system so the users may be either people or machines we can call as a peer to peer communication or machine to machine communication and uh, other computers so these are all the uh, basic uh, four components which are divided into any particular system one is hardware second one is operating system third one application programs fourth one is uh, users so these are the how the relationship is established among those uh, four components of a computer system so we know the operating system which uh, acts as a interface between computer hardware as well as the users that is a basic definition 
the operating system acts as interface between user as well as the computer hardware. See, the operating system is built upon hardware and system and application programs. So, there are a number of uh, system and application programs like uh, compilers, assemblers, text editors uh, and so on, database systems. See here, each and every user, see there is a, a bi-directional way between these uh, system and application programs as well as the users. Let us take the user 1 interacts with the compiler, user 2 interacts with the assembler and so on. So here we can say that uh, how those four components of a computer system may be interrelated to each other. So this is a, a pictorial representation of uh, those four components of a computer system. Now coming to the what operating systems do. What operating systems do. See here that depends upon the point of view regarding the how the users use that particular system. So always we know one of the goal of operating system is provide some environment which is convenient to the user. So that is users want convenience that is we can call as a ease of use ease of use. So users want some convenience. But here that particular user don't care about the resource utilization. Resource utilization. So we know basically these resources are classified into the two categories. One is logical resources. Second one is physical resources logical resources and physical resources. So nowadays you are very familiar about the physical resources, right? So like uh, input output devices like uh, printer, right? Uh, scanners, logical resources. So we will discuss in the later these logical devices uh, like uh, semaphores as well as the monitors. So these are the various logical devices. So we don't care about that particular resource utilization. But we have some convenience, how easy we need to use that particular system. But in case of uh, shared computers, such as uh, mainframes or uh, mini computers, so must keep all the users happy, right? So that means which uh, uh, provide some environment to each and every user within that particular uh, shared computers. So the best example for shared computers are IBM mainframes. Now here, each and every users have some dedicated systems such as workstations. So each and every workstation have some dedicated resources. Like, so this is my system. So this is my printer. This is my scanner. So these particular uh, workstations as well as uh, these resources are ded dedicated to this particular user. But frequently use shared resources from the server. So definitely whenever we need to execute one particular application program, which is basically divided into the number of modules. So all the modules must be communicated one particular uh, shared server. So that is the best example for how conveniently the users may use that particular uh, system. Then nowadays, uh, handheld computers, you know, we are uh, very familiar about the handheld uh, uh, computers, uh, just like our mobiles. So, which are uh, resource poor and uh, optimized for usability and uh, battery life. Right. So, these are all the handheld computers are uh, resource poor. But, you know, some computers which have a little or no use, no user interface. Right. So such as uh, embedded computers in devices uh, and automobiles. So basically uh, embedded computers are always uh, like that only. So there is uh, a no user interface with the help of some particular program. We need to interact with that particular embedded uh, computers. So according to the operating system definition point of view, the operating system acts as a resource allocator and operating system is a control program. Operating system is a resource allocator. 
right so just now we described that uh, there are number of uh, uh, resources like logical resources as well as the physical resources so what happens in real time applications uh, the resources are less when compared to the users as well as the systems right now it is the responsibility of operating system to manage all the resources to manage all the resources uh, among uh, different uh, users that means uh, the operating system decides uh, between conflicting requests for efficient and fair resource use so if you take uh, the best example uh, like operating system acts as a resource allocator if you take any internet cave within that only 10 systems let us take uh, example 10 systems are there but only one printer is there so what happens uh, whatever the users which are using that particular 10 systems uh, each and every user is uh, ready to take print uh, by using that particular single resource uh, physical resource called as a printer now it is a responsibility of operating system which manages all the resources we know that particular printer will works on uh, first in first out manner so whatever the request uh, came from that particular resource so based on that particular request first the operating system will produce the output so that means uh, the operating system is a resource allocator which decides between conflicting requests for efficient and fair resource use then second one operating system is a control program control program in the sense in the sense so the operating system controls the execution of programs both system programs as well as application programs to prevent errors and uh, improper use of the computer right so you know the operating system always uh, we can call as a uh, praise the users as well as uh, warn the users right so if any program is success then it says that uh, uh, successfully copied or successfully transferred if anything happens uh, that is if any interrupt arises then operating system wants the user hello this is not correct so this is a uh, somewhat there is no such disk available so something so here the operating system acts as a, a control program which controls uh, various uh, execution of programs to prevent errors and improper use of the computer so that's why for that uh, operating system there is no universally accepted uh, definition right but according to the vendors everything a vendor ships when you order an operating system is good approximation but varies uh, widely but if you take some systems the program which is running at all the times on the computers uh, that is the kernel that is the kernel right so this deals about the how the operating system is uh, defined then coming to this uh, computer startup so we know in general there is a common question what is the first program executes in your system right so by default uh, most of the guys are said that uh, operating system because they know once uh, we just start up the system just look at that particular operating system only but before that before that actually the bootstrap uh, program is uh, executed we can call it as uh, the booting the first program executes in our system that is the booting process so bootstrap program is loaded at power up or a reboot so where that particular bootstrap program will be stored so typically this particular bootstrap program is stored in rom or eprom so we know read only memory as well as the erasable programmable read only memory so which is generally called as a firmware firmware so what is the purpose of this particular uh, firmware so which initializes all aspects of system which initializes all aspects of system so that is just like uh, uh, whether all the input devices or output devices which are uh, correctly established or not right then the next program that is uh, which loads the operating system kernel and starts execution so the first program executes in our system that is a uh, booting second one is uh, operating system so how the computer system is uh, organized right so nowadays uh, we know each and every system which is having uh, a number of input devices number of uh, output devices a number of uh, controllers 
right so depends upon our requirement uh, we may enlarge our particular systems so the computer system operation which consists of one or more processors we can call as a dual core processors and uh, device controllers which are connect through a common bus which are connect through a common bus so this is the common bus which provides access to shared memory so this is a shared memory so initially initially what happens uh, with the help of this particular uh, bus you know the purpose of bus is just to transfer the information or data see processor various disk controllers uh, usb controllers like mouse keyboard printer scanner then some graphic adapters uh, that is uh, particularly meant for the output screening purpose uh, like monitors or tvs or projectors right so these are communicated with the help of some common uh, bus so this is a, a bus right so these various processors device controllers connect through this particular common bus which provides access to shared memory this is the shared memory that particular memory whatever the content we need to store in that particular memory or we need to retrieve from the memory that will happens only with the help of the bus so that's why here we can call as a concurrent execution of various processors and devices competing for memory cycles concurrent execution of processors and devices so this is uh, how the computer system may be organized computer system organization then based upon these particular components uh, what are the various operation that is computer system operation how each and every device operates within that particular computer system see first one io devices and processor can execute concurrently because whatever the uh, inputs we are given so within a fraction of time we need to retrieve those those inputs to the output device right so basically input devices and processor can execute concurrently then each device controller is in charge of a particular device type each and every device controller is in charge of a particular device type so based upon that particular uh, uh, device type we have different uh, device controllers then each and every device controller has a local buffer each and every device controller has a local buffer so which helps to retrieve some part of a uh, data then processor moves data from the main memory or to the main memory to some local buffers so that is a major role of a processor to execute we can call as a to process various tasks or jobs which are defined by the user so processor moves data from the memory or to the main memory to some local uh, buffers now input output is from the device to local buffer of a controller right so this particular device controller which tells processor that it has finished its operation by causing an interrupt see basically interrupt is a uh, some unexpected event happens some disturbance right so that particular uh, interrupt how that particular interrupt which is accepted by the processor so each and every device controller informs processor that it has finished its operation by causing an interrupt right so just like uh, i need to take uh, my bio data in the form of a uh, printout so automatically once i log into the system then i'm using that particular physical resource type like printer and uh, with the help of that particular uh, uh, application program like ms word i need to take the print of my particular uh, resume so once it initiates the operation then the processor is allocated uh, to me that particular process once my process is completed then that particular device controller informs the processor hello processor my, i completed this particular task right so please assign some other task so something right so these are the various uh, computer system operation how those uh, various components are uh, execute our own programs then what are the various common functions of uh, interrupts so we know interrupt is an unexpected error or some disturbance so always uh, interrupt transfers uh, 
control to the isr isr means uh, interrupt service routine this particular uh, interrupt service uh, routine which store various uh, interrupts so interrupt transfers control to the isr interrupt service routine generally through the interrupt vector iv generally through the interrupt vector which contains the addresses of all the service routine so interrupt vector which stores or which contains the addresses of all the service uh, routines now the interrupt architecture must save the address of the interrupted instruction that is very important interrupt architecture must save the address of the interrupted instruction now the various incoming interrupts are disabled various interrupts incoming interrupts are disabled while another interrupt is being processed to prevent a lost interrupt so these are all the common functions of interrupts right so in case of uh, systems generally we can call as a, a trap trap a trap is a software generated interrupt which is caused either by an error or a user request so here the operating system which consists of interrupt driven so finally we can say that uh, operating system is a uh, interrupt driven so operating system can capable of handling uh, various uh, interrupts right so these are all the various uh, functions of uh, interrupts then interrupt handling how the operating system handles various interrupts so the operating system preserves the state of the processor by using storing resources registers and the program counter so the operating system preserves the state of the processor by storing registers and program counter so we know registers generally in case of uh, computers the registers are helpful to store a very limited amount of uh, data right so you know the program counter the purpose of program counter is uh, to execute the next instruction which stores the address of the next instruction and execute that particular uh, instruction so always uh, the program counter is incremented by one then determines which type of interrupt has occurred right so the operating system which determines what type of operating interrupt has occurred one is a uh, polling second one is a uh, vectored interrupt system so what is meant by polling how the operating system uh, determines vector interrupt system we will discuss uh, later then we have separate segments of code which determines what action should be taken for each type of interrupt right so for example if any uh, we can call as a polling will occur then the operating system decides decides what action should be taken for that particular type of interrupt right so in this way the operating system handles uh, various uh, interrupts then coming to this uh, input output structure input output structure so we know each and uh, every input output uh, device which is having some control mechanism right so that means if any user wants to request for any particular uh, input device then automatically the processor allocates that particular input or output device if it is free right for example if that particular resource or any input output device may not free may not free in the sense that is uh, used by some other process then what happens automatically the processor generates uh, one particular queue so within that particular uh, queue your request may entered into that particular queue so after uh, execution of the previous process then first in in the first in first out manner each and every request is accepted by the processor to use that particular resource or input output device so that is uh, basically input output structure the purpose of input output structure so after input output starts the control returns to the user program only upon io completion after input output starts the control returns to the user program only upon completion of that particular input output so first one is a wait 
instruction which uh, idles the processor until the next interrupt. So, wait instruction. Second one is a uh, wait loop. So, that is a uh, contention for memory access. So, we know at most only one input output request is outstanding at a time. So, there are no simultaneous input output processings or happen. Then after input output starts, the control returns to the user program without waiting for IO completion. Without waiting for IO completion. So, that is happens with the help of system calls as well as the device status table you know system calls so in case of operating system system calls are very important because uh, system calls request to the operating system to allows users to wait for an input output completion right so then a device status table you know each and every device if you take a keyboard mouse printer scanner so whatever the device which contains uh, entry for each input output device indicating what is the type of that particular device, what is the address of that particular device and what is the state of that particular device. Right. So, that is the device status table. Then the operating system indexes into input output device table to determine device status and to modify table entry to include uh, interrupt. So, that is the Operating system indexes into the input output uh, device table, right? So, whatever the device tables we are having, the operating system acts as indexes into that particular device table to determine that particular uh, status of that particular device and for each and every time to modify the table entry to include the interrupts. So, in this way, the operating system will execute various programs with the help of that particular system calls as well as the device status uh, tables. Then uh, DMA, direct memory access structure, direct memory access uh, structure. See, basically this particular uh, DMA, direct memory access structure, which is used for high speed input output devices, which is used for high speed input output devices, which are able to transmit information at close to the memory speeds. So, whenever we need to transfer some huge amount of bulk amount of uh, uh, data, then uh, we can go for this particular uh, DMA, direct memory access, right. So, here the device controller transfers uh, a blocks of data, device controller transfers a blocks of data from buffer storage directly to the main memory without CPU intervention. This is very important here without a processor intervention because for example, I need to send a 20 GB of data, right? So what happens uh, with the help of a uh, processor, right? So whatever the previous techniques uh, we are having. So until my 20 GB is uh, transferred successfully until the processor is uh, simply idle. But what is our main aim to improve the system performance in which here we need to execute more programs within a short period of time. So that's why here we need to introduce the DMA, direct memory access. So what happens just the processor initiates the operation and the processor leaves that particular operation. So device controller transfers a blocks of data from buffer storage directly to the main memory without any processor intervention. If something happens that is uh, only one interrupt is generated per block rather than one interrupt per byte. So once my data is not transferred for example for due to any reasons uh, one block is not transferred that is here this particular uh, process is stopped and which informs to the processor hello processor uh, this particular data may not be transferred due to this particular reason. Right. So, only one interrupt is generated per block rather than one interrupt per byte. So, in this way, the DMA structure will help to the operating system. Then, storage structure. We know basically we have a uh, uh, number of uh, storage devices according to the memory point of view. We have uh, primary storage as well as the secondary storage as well as the magnetic disk. So, there are a number of uh, storage devices are there, right? So, what happens here? Main memory. So, main memory which is uh, acts 
as a primary memory right so that is a uh, volatile in nature right so that is a uh, how randomly we need to access that particular memory right so which stores less amount of memory when compared to the secondary storage but main memory is fast when compared to the secondary storage so only a large storage media that the processor can access directly that is the main memory right because you know each and every program must be executed from the main memory only right so that is a ra random access that is typically volatile in nature you know what is meant by volatile so whatever the content which stores in that particular main memory once the power is switched off then automatically that particular data may be erased then secondary storage so which is just extension of main memory which means that according to the capacity point of view according to the storage point of view secondary storage is very large when compared to the main memory so nowadays you know uh, ram capacity is 4 gb or 8 gb or 16 gb whereas uh, hard disk capacity is 1 terabyte 2 terabyte 3 terabytes right so extension of main memory which provides a large non volatile storage capacity non volatile we know that non volatile means whatever the content or data which stored in that particular secondary storage devices those are permanent not erased then magnetic uh, disk you know these magnetic uh, disks are made up of rigid metal or glass platters covered with uh, magnetic uh, recording material so uh, previously we have this particular uh, magnetic disk like uh, cds uh, floppy disk cds uh, right so each and every disk surface is logically divided into the tracks which are subdivided into the sectors right so these are the disks and these are the sectors like that so each and every disk surface is logically divided into the tracks which are again subdivided into the sectors so whatever the disk controller determines the logical interaction between device and the computer so these are all the uh, storage uh, uh, structures so i hope uh, you already discussed these concepts in computer organization then coming to these uh, storage systems we have various storage uh, systems like uh, from registers to the secondary storage uh, devices those are varied according to the speed according to those cost according to the volatility right so we have some that particular uh, storage uh, hierarchy graphical representation so we know what is meant by catching copying information into the faster storage systems that is a uh, main memory can be viewed as a catchy for secondary storage so just a uh, main memory acts as a we can call as a temporary storage for uh, secondary storage so we'll describe uh, later this particular uh, catching mechanism see this is a storage device uh, hierarchy we have uh, uh, registers see the pictorial uh, representation which represents uh, what is the size of that particular uh, uh, device like uh, see registers which has very less size catching memory main memory this is we can generally called as a ram which is volatile uh, in nature electronic disk magnetic disk optical disk and uh, magnetic uh, tapes like a uh, hard disk so this is the storage device uh, hierarchy so according to the uh, we can call as a, a storage uh, point of view storage point of view this is uh, increase the storage from registers to the magnetic uh, dips uh, the storage is uh, increased the storage is uh, increased right then catching you know this is the important principle performed at many levels in a computer so the information which is used copied from slower to the faster storage uh, temporarily so that is the purpose of the catching right so faster storage is nothing but uh, the catching memory checks first to determine if information is there if the information is there then the particular information is used directly from the catching memory if it is not there then that particular information is copied to that particular cache memory and we need to use from the cache memory right so these are all the various uh, uh, concepts we will uh, uh, look into this particular uh, paging as well as the segmentation right in the next videos then cache memory which is always smaller than the storage be being cached cache management that is important design problem cache size and uh, replacement uh, policy so this particular replacement policy this is an important uh, thing here this is just introduction so we will discuss later in uh, page replacement uh, algorithms then 
computer system architecture so we know most of the systems use a single general purpose uh, uh, processes those are uh, pds through mainframes like pds are personal digital assistant so nowadays you are using personal digital assistants uh, like our mobile phones so most of the systems have special purpose processors as well so these uh, multi processors uh, systems growing in use and uh, importance because these are also known as uh, parallel systems or tightly coupled systems parallel systems or tightly coupled uh, systems right so what are the advantages when compared to the we have uh, we can call as a loosely coupled systems or uh, distributed systems what are the advantages which includes uh, first one is uh, increased uh, throughput increased uh, throughput we know what is meant by throughput number of jobs executed per unit time number of jobs executed per unit time so that means uh, always the operating system one of the goal is uh, to execute more number of programs within the short period of time right uh, so that is the first advantage then second one is a uh, economy of scale economy of scale right uh, always that is uh, we can call as a uh, feasible right uh, so the cost is uh, uh, less when compared to the remaining thing then third one increased reliability increased reliability so each and every multi processor uh, system which reliable in nature so which may not be deteriorated we have uh, two categories of multi processor symmetric multi processing and uh, asymmetric multi processing so we will uh, discuss later the symmetric multi processing and asymmetric uh, uh, multi processing see how the modern computers uh, nowadays will work right see we have uh, each and every device which may handle more number of tasks at a time like uh, interrupts data and uh, input output uh, request so this is the processor this is a processor which is having some storage like a uh, cache memory which executes more number of tasks those are here we can call as a, a thread of uh, execution see this is the memory this is the memory so we know previously dme right uh, direct uh, memory access so without the processor uh, intervention so each and every device may access directly that particular uh, memory so that is the concept of uh, uh, dme so this particular memory here we have instructions and uh, data so that is the instruction execution cycle and uh, data movement so uh, in the later we will discuss this particular uh, instruction execution cycle so each and every instruction execution cycle will works on a fetch and uh, execute manner fetch execute uh, manner so in this way modern computer in the sense one particular processor may handle different tasks right so that is uh, represented uh, here this is a symmetric multi processing architecture so already we discussed in this uh, uh, tightly coupled systems we have two categories symmetric as well as the uh, asymmetric so symmetric multi processing uh, architecture see we have number of uh, processors cpu 0 cpu 1 cpu 2 right uh, those processors can communicate with this particular uh, shared memory with the help of this particular uh, common bus so we know each and every processor which is having some registers as well as a cache memory right so this describes this uh, symmetric uh, multi processing then we have a uh, dual core design right uh, so dual core is nothing but the processor is divided into the two cores uh, core not core one like that so various tasks may be executed on those particular uh, registers with the help of the cache memory dual core uh, design then clustered systems clustered systems like multi processor systems uh, these cluster systems uh, acts as a multi processor systems but uh, multiple systems working together so rather than one particular system so what happens in the previous case one particular system is there but in case of clustered uh, systems usually sharing a storage so whatever the we can call as a st stored area that particular stored area may be shared to various users with the help of a uh, san so san is nothing but here storage area network storage area network so symmetric clustering has a uh, multiple nodes which are running different applications and monitoring each other whereas uh, asymmetric clustering has only one machine 
in hot standby mode so some of the clusters are for uh, hpc so that is a uh, high performance uh, computing here what happens in case of cluster systems uh, applications must be written to use uh, parallelization applications must be written to use uh, parallelization so parallelization so that means various uh, users may be accessed uh, with that particular stored uh, devices so those are described here in case of uh, clustered uh, systems see uh, with the help of this particular diagram we need to easily understood what is meant by clustered system see there are different uh, computers so rather than uh, single computer here different uh, systems like computer 1 computer 2 computer 3 like these are uh, interconnect these are interconnect to each other and all the systems access with uh, one particular uh, storage area network sin storage area network so that is the clustered systems right so with this uh, i conclude that this is the introduction about uh, operating system so in this uh, video we'll discuss uh, what is meant by operating system what is the purpose of uh, operating system and uh, what are the objectives of uh, operating system and uh, introduction about the computer system architecture as well as the computer system design right so in the next video we look at the operations as well as the structure of operating system thank you one and all i hope you like this video like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates